everything in operations management is modeled as a process. And a process has an input and an output and a throughput, the number of things that this process can handle. The amount of the um, items that a subsystem can process can be measured in two different ways. One is based on the process time. For example, I tell you that in this kitchen, they can make a dish every 20 minutes. The, this is a kitchen. They make a dish every 20 minutes, okay? Now we can convert that to how many dishes they can produce every hour. So per hour, how many dishes they can produce? Three. 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 Yeah, so you see these two, these two methods, the, the time and the rate are related. You can exchange those. So let's think about like the, the second one, the rate. Let's assume that this is a process that can handle three requests three services or three productions per hour, okay? Per hour. Now, I want you to answer me. If on average, one request arrives, will we have a buildup? Let's say um, a customer arrives one per hour. So let's say this, this customer arrives. Do you think that he should wait to be served? or we can start serving him right away. When he arrives, we start serving him. He shouldn't wait. Like the service starts, service starts right away. Okay. Now, if two people arrive every hour, then what happens? We can serve easily, so yeah, we can serve them easily. So we don't think that there, there would be a build up. Mm -hmm. If three arrives, still we can seems to be able to serve. But if four people arrive every hour, then it is obvious that there would be a problem. Yeah. yeah. If four people arrive per hour and we can only serve three people per hour, it's obvious that there would be a queue, a wait line we build up in front of this process, okay? Yeah. And that is what we want to um, um, basically understand. Now, the irony is that in most processes, even if, even if three people arrive, just I want, if you get this intuition, then you have got the whole idea here. Just think that our process can handle three, uh, can you know, service three services per hour, and on average, three people come for services an hour. Do you think that any people will ha have to wait? No. Just think a little more. I want you to yourself discover it. Okay, so let's say the first person arrives at nine o'clock, 9 a.m. If the second person arrives at 9.20, we can serve him right away. And if the next person arrives at 9.40, we can serve that person right away. So none of them have to wait. Yeah. If they arrive at this specific timing, but will they arrive at that specific timing? No. No. Okay. So because they don't arrive, because their arrival is random, because the arrival is random, you know, they are not timing each other saying that, oh, you go in, then 20 minutes after you, I will come in. They, they choose their coming in random. And on average, they come three per hour. So even though our capacity is three services per hour and people are coming with a rate of three people per hour, still some of them have to wait, probably long wait times. 
Good? Yes, sir. Yeah. So it turns out that, uh, okay, let's continue the PowerPoint now. So now that you got the question, uh, let's go to the topic. So in front of shopper, supermarkets, in front of doctor's offices, in front of banks, wherever you go, you will see that a line uh, is built up. And the reason that it is built up is that, you know, even if you have your capacity equal to the uh, arrival rate of people, still these queues will build up because people have the, like the arrival of people is a random phenomenon. Uh, so if you want to be more precise, people arrive with a distribution. So you cannot say that people arrive every 20 minutes. People arrive with a probability distribution. And our services also is not a constant. Like sometimes our service may take, uh, you know, um, different, uh, you know, some of the dishes may be served very fast and some of them, so each one of the uh, two processes, the arrival and our process can have different probability distributions. They are not constants. The world is not like a, a predetermined. And that uh, causes a lot of uh, difficulties. So for example, this, look at this Dave's, uh, Dave's car wash. Like he can think that we can, um, you know, serve every car in five minutes. But if 10 cars come, arrive at the same time, then the last one should wait. Although our capacity is enough because their arrival has a statistical distribution. And the service characteristic is also a statistical distribution. It depends to how you know dirty is one of the machines that is in the process. So even if the on average it takes 15 minutes to serve a car, some of them may take 20 minutes and some of them may take 10 minutes. Okay. The parameters that are involved is the, the you know how many people are interested in the service, how do they arrive, the pattern of arrival and how they, uh, you know, basically, um, do they come together or do they, uh, uh, if they wait in the line, will they stay in the line? Or if they see that the line is too long, you know, look at this, this person arrives and sees that this is, I am number 10. You see this dot, dot, dot. So he may decide to stay, like a loyal customer would stay, but a non-loyal customer would see, look, why should I wait 10, 10 lines? So this, uh, the behavior of the people in the wait line also a determinant. What we are usually interested in is the, the length of this lineup. Now answer me, if the length of the lineup is longer, will it hurt our business or will is good for our business? It will hurt. It, yeah, it hurts. It hurts. You, know, you may think that, you know, it's not bad if you have one or two cars always showing up. It shows that there is a demand. But if it is beyond a threshold, it can really hurt your business. People may decide not to come back to your business. Yeah, we lost the uh, customer loyalty. Yeah, very good. So, and cost, uh, um, you know, cost of lost opportunity is huge. Like if you hire another person, to have two lines here, you know, two entries for the cars. How much does it cost you? If you if you have the land, you know, per hour you pay to your employees, let's say ten dollar. But how much do you charge every car? Twenty dollar. So you have one hundred percent profit. So it's not a good <coughs> thing to see people leaving the the queue. Okay, so. Our goal is to uh, study the, the number of people and the thing is that are the number of customers limited or unlimited? Usually for uh, if the service is like a car wash, you can assume that the number of customers are so huge, you can consider them unlimited. But uh, if you have a niche market that there are few customers in it, then that's an important um, uh, basically issue. The other is how they arrive. Do they arrive like the, uh, the arrival can be a normal distribution. Let's say 
you know, the, the most probable rate of arrival is every five minutes, which would be 12 per hour. <coughs> and, but it's not a constant, it may go longer, it may go shorter, but the distribution of arrival times can also be Poisson. Uh, and Poisson, you probably have heard of it in your statistics. A, it can be distributed with a skewness. Okay. And usually if the only thing that we know is the average rate of arrival, Poisson distribution is a distribution that the only variable that, that determines its shape is the mu or the average rate of the arrival. And because you usually know the average rate, most uh, models, they rely on Poisson distribution. But don't let this formula to make you panic, okay? So the meaning of this, this is the Poisson distribution. And it's basically the probability of some specific number of arrivals, like the probability that in the next hour we have four people arriving. I just show you how do we calculate it, okay? Do you see this E? This is a Nepper's constant. Does anybody know what is that? It's like two point, what is E? Do you remember? 718. Yeah, 71 or something like that. And this lambda is the um, average rate. So the, let's say the average rate of arrival is three, so we say three. This is the only thing that we know. Lambda is actually the mu, and let's assume it is three. So it is a constant to the power of negative three, and that three, which is the same lambda here, to the power of the question, what is the chance that four people will arrive? And then the denominator is the same thing factorial. 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1. This is the meaning of the factor here. Okay. So if you want to find the chance of, you know, in the next hour, instead of 3, which is our capacity, 4 people will arrive, we know that. Also notice that based on this mu, the average, the Poisson, the shape of the Poisson distribution is known. You can go to internet, and it shapes, it shape changes, but it is usually skewed, uh, except when mu becomes more than five. So, um, but all of these things that I'm telling you, it's not really, you shouldn't panic about this, because the result of this shape of distribution is what we have a bunch of formulas in the book. So this is a number of examples of the two Poisson distribution, look at this, this is, like a, this is an skewed one. And this is a more symmetric shape. And the reason that it is becoming more symmetric, look at this, if the average rate is two, it is skewed. When the average rate of arrival, this is average rate, is five, then it becomes more symmetric. This is basically our question. This is our question. So the only thing that we need to know is this lambda, which is the average. You see, the only thing we need to know is lambda. The rest is either a constant or, a, um, or the question that we are asking. What is the chance that five people arrive? What is the chance that six people arrive? And so forth. Sir, how you got lambda five? It's a rate of coming Yeah, out. you measure, like you, in real life, you want to know what is the average number of people who come to your car wash, you okay. measure. Yeah, you find the average, okay? And once you find the average, then 2.7 to the power of negative average, average to the power of, let's say you want to know what is the chance that next hour seven people arrive. You just type for X, you plug seven and you get it. Okay. okay. Yeah, so basically, uh, this is how arrivals usually are modeled. Uh, in real life uh, or in real simulations, if you need it, you can actually find out what is the exact uh, shape of distribution of uh, arrival of people to your business. Now, the, the way that, look at this, this is, let's, just, let's go with the books example. So 
So this is a process and cars are arriving, okay? If cars are arriving one after the other, but they are, they are coming randomly, we don't know, like uh, one hour, two of them may show up and then next hour, five of them may show up. Um, the processor, the person who is doing the car wash job has a number of options. One option is that he can choose, like he say, he says, okay, I will serve this one first, this one second, and so forth. So I go in order. That is called first in, first out. Okay, or FIFO model. But you don't have to do that. You know, the, there are other models that is not discussed, but it's mentioned in the book. So for example, the, the another model is the shortest processing time first. This guy comes out and says, what do you want to do? And this guy says, I want to wash my tires. And this one, what do you want to do? I want to wash my whole car, okay? So, and the next one here says that, I just want to clean inside the car, okay? So you may decide that I will do this one first, this one second, and this one the, that has the longest work, I will do it at the end. So the way that you decide to serve your customers is another parameter. The, that is called the discipline. Is everybody following us? Yes, sir. What is the discipline? Yeah, you can, you can you know, for example, in an emergency room, is this... First come, first served in a hospital. Yes, first in, first Listen, come. listen carefully. You are the receptionist in a hospital, in the emergency room. Do you serve the first person who arrives first and the second person second? No. Or you no, check no. if you see that the fourth person is dying, you will serve him first. Yes, sir. Yes, so I repeat my question. Just I want to, you know, wake you up. In a hospital, is it first in, first out? No. 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 Yeah. No. But in a, let's say in a car wash, maybe it is. In a gas station that has one pump, then it is first in, first out. Um, in a wait line in a bank, maybe it's first in, first out. But uh, it depends. Uh, in a hospital, it is not first in person. And uh, for example, in a gas station that has multiple pumps, it is um, not a single channel. It is a multi-channel. So some, so this is a gas station with multiple pumps. So usually gas stations are a multiple channel system. Usually a bank is, when you go to a bank, how many people are serving the arrivals? So when you go to a bank, just let's Do model you? the bank. We got these people form a lineup in front of the, you know, tellers, and then there are a bunch of tellers. So when we model this, these are the tellers. There is a one lineup, but there are, um, multiple channels of service. So it's a multi-channel system, okay? And uh, there are single phase and multi-phase systems. So a single phase system is this, okay? Let me show you an example of a, uh, maybe I ask you, if you go to your family physician, how many doctors will see you? One. Okay, so let's, let us write it. So first one is family doctor. Who is going to serve you? Your family doctor. Okay. Now, if you go to the hospital, will one doctor see you? No. Yeah, it depends. So when you go to the, to the hospital, first, the emergency doctor sees you. And now they see that you're you know, basically your, I don't know, the somewhere is broken, your leg is broken. Then they will send you to another doctor who is the specialist for that job. So now this is a 
multi-phase. There is one line, if you go through one process, but there are multiple people who have to do things for you. So that's called a multi-phase system. So your family doctor is a single phase system, while a hospital is a multi-phase system. A gas station is a multi-channel system. Your f family physician is single channel or multi-channel? Single. single channel. Single, yeah, because that's the family. And all of the people who want to see that family doctor, they have to wait. And sir, um, bank will be the multi-channel? Multi-channel like a gas station, like okay. the bank. Look at this, this is the bank. This is teller one, this is teller two. These are employees of the bank. You okay. know, you arrive, you may go to this person. This guy is serving you. Then the next person, this guy is serving them. So there are two channels of service. Okay. Okay. And the other thing is, so this, um, this one, so I point to it, you tell me uh, one channel or two channel, this one. Single channel. Single channel. One channel. Yeah, one channel. Uh, single phase or multi phase? Single phase. Single phase. Yeah. Very good. This one. How many channels? One. Two. Multi channel. How many channels? One channel. One. How many phases? Two. Two phases. Very good. This one. How many channels? Three. Three. Very good. And let's say you are this guy. You go to this channel. How many phases do your uh, is your service? One. One. Yeah. So One. basically, you go to this person and you are served. So it's multi-channel but single phase. Now this one. How many channels? Four, two. Two. Two, two channels. Two. How many phases? Two phases. Yeah. So look at this. Like this is like an hos a hospital that has two emergency doctors. The first patient goes to this doctor, the second patient goes to this doctor. Now the emergency doctor decides that this guy has a cancer, for example. So this guy will go to the next phase to a specialist. And this doctor decides that this person has a broken leg. So we'll send it to another specialist. So each person will go to how many phases? Two. Two. And how many channels exist? Two. Two. Yeah. So basically, you understood these ideas. Now, the, 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 the service itself has also its own distribution. So look at this. The, let me erase this part. So service time also has its own distribution. People arrive with a Poisson distribution. So this is the way that people arrive. Poisson. The time that it takes to serve each person has a special distribution called a negative exponential distribution. Okay. And I tell you why it is negative exponential. You know, this is the distribution of service time. Service time is done by this guy, the teller in the bank, okay? Now let's think how is the shape of the service time? Maybe I draw it here, service time, okay? Most people who are waiting in line, will they have a very long job or they have a short job? So each, just think about this. You are in a bank, each person goes to the teller. Most people, what do they want to do? withdraw money or uh, yeah money? they go to that yeah very good so they go to that and i say i want 100 dollar i want to deposit 200 dollar i have a check i want to deposit and so forth so most people if this is the time that it takes to for them to be served most people are here and this is the frequency let's say those whose the job takes five minutes to be done are most people most people will be done in five minutes. But then every other time, there are people whose job takes 10 minutes. 
Like the guy says, I have three checks to download and this is my business and so forth. But these are fewer people, right? And then every other time there is a customer like this guy who doesn't know what to do. So go to the, to the teller and takes 15 minutes of his time. Okay. So most people have very short service times. And then there are few people, like there's also possible that there is a customer who takes 20 minutes, another customer who takes 25 minutes, but the shape of the distribution is usually something like that. That means that, let's go back to this one, now you understand this. It means that um, for most people, their time is very low. This is a short time. So it takes very short time, but for most people, the frequency of these kind of people is a lot. And then there are few people who take, uh, you know, this only these few people uh, are there whose time is much longer. Good? Yes, sir. So if you get the average, um, you know, your average will be somewhere here. This is the average. So average service time will be there, but we know that most people will not have a very long service time. And the reason that the average is here is that because these people who are, you know, this guy who takes two hours to be served, this rarely happen, but it changes the average. Okay. So if you go to a bank, you are probably, you are served within five minutes, but if you are unlucky and then there is a customer in front of you, one of those two hour customers, that will increase the waiting time. So in a bank, so let's think about uh, like, how do we summarize this? In a bank, if this is a bank, the arrival of people, what is the distribution of the arrival of the people? We usually consider the distribution of arrival with a distribution that is Poisson distribution. I just show it to you. It's a, it has a shape like this. But the service time that it takes for those people to serve has a distribution that is like this. For most people, it takes little time. But for some few people, it takes a lot of time. So this is the distribution of service. This is the distribution of arrival. Is everybody following me? Yeah. Most services are short, few minutes. Few services take two hours. Most services take half an hour. Okay? Okay. Okay? So, I, I just point to a symbol and you tell me, is it given to you or you calculate it? How do you find it? The number of arrivals. This. How do you it find this? So it will be given. Yeah. You either, if you are the business owner, you measure the average number of arrivals. Mean means average. Mean is a synonym for average. So you find the average number of arrivals based on your data. And this is the arrivals follow what kind of distribution? Poison. Poisson. Not poison, poisson means fish. Okay. Okay. And then uh, mu is the average number of people who are served. Okay. Average number of people who are served. mean number of people or items served per time. So that follows, you know, most of the time many people are served, but then sometimes few people are served. So that follows a negative exponential. You will never be asked to calculate the, the negative exponential formulas, but just to know. Then the questions that you may want. We want to know the average, we want to know the average number of customers that are in the system. 
What does that mean? This is our system. On average, three people are waiting in the line and two people are being served inside the car wash. So we want to know what is the total number of people who are on average in the system? We use this formula. Why? You don't have to know it. Good? So, yes, I give you all of this information about the arrival is postponed and the distribution of the service time. So these people arrive with a postponed distribution and these service times have a negative exponential distribution, but it doesn't matter. You have to use this formula. When these conditions, when these two conditions are satisfied, the result is that the number of people who are waiting in the system comes from this formula. The average number of units, um, the average time that units spend in the system will come from this formula. The average number of units waiting in the queue, like how much time it takes for these people waiting in the queue, comes from this formula. Average time a unit spends waiting in the queue. So this is number of people. This is the time that they spend in the queue. Okay. Okay. And then utilization factor, like what percentage of your capacity is being used, comes from this formula. So the only thing that you have to do yeah, and then probability of nobody being in the system, like basically your, your time being wasted um, comes from this formula and probability of more than five people coming being in the system comes from this formula. So enumerating these formulas is not really helping you. Let me tell you what helps you. What helps you? you read a question. The first thing that you have to identify is what type of process it is and so the type of what are the possible types of processes okay so listen this part is helps you for your homework listen carefully so the decision that you make is it single channel or multi-channel is it single uh, single stage or multi-stage, single phase or multi-phase. Is the distribution of arrival person Is the distribution of process time negative exponential? These are the questions that you ask. So then let's say if the question that you are reading says that we have single channel, single phase, the arrival is postponed, the process is neg uh, negative exponential, then you use these formulas to answer the question. So don't go to, you don't need to go to these formulas to answer, you know, you don't need to go to the exponential formula and, you know, panic yourself that, oh, Poisson formula is e to the power of blah. If you want, like if the question says, what is the exact chance of something, then you need to go to this formula. But for most of the questions, you simply plug in to one of these formulas. It says, what is the average number of units in the system? You just divide lambda by mu minus lambda. So um, this chapter is probably the easiest chapter that you have. So look at this. Two cars arriving per hour. Three cars are serviced per hour. Okay. Can we tell how many cars in the system are, are in the system on average? Cars in the system on average. Yeah. We get this formula. Two divided by three minus two. But can we use this always? No. We can use this formula if the arrival is Poisson. Sorry, Poisson is not like that. Poisson is P-O-I. Yeah, the arrival is Poisson 
and the service time is negative exponential and somebody must have studied that and they, it is you are told so don't you are never responsible to prove that it is Poisson and negative exponential the question says the arrival is Poisson the service is negative exponential your job is to use the averages the average arrival time and average service time and you'll find the number of cars that are on average in the system you will find how many cars are waiting on average. You will find um, what is the average waiting time. You will find uh, uh, like what is the percentage utilization. So, or percentage of time that the mechanic is busy is the utilization. 